nine Hamas terrorists killed in overnight explosions. Six arrested in connection to Palestinian teen Abu Qadir's killing. Avigdor Lieberman announces split from Likud party. An Israeli smartphone app is designed to detect cancer. Shalom and welcome to the Jerusalem Post News. Here are your headlines for Monday, July 7th. A grad rocket fired from the Gaza Strip reached an open area just outside of Beersheba, further than any of the previous strikes in the past few weeks. The IAF struck 14 targets overnight Monday in two waves of airstrikes. Nine terrorists, including seven Hamas members who were in a tunnel in Rafah, were killed. It was not immediately clear whether the seven Hamas men died as a result of an airstrike or a working accident in the underground structure. In the second wave of strikes, launched a few hours later, five underground rocket launchers were bombed. Hamas said most of the strikes were launched at a gathering point for its members in Gaza's southernmost town of Rafah at the Egyptian border, and another strike was launched in northern Gaza. At least 150 rockets have been launched from Gaza into Israeli territory since June 14th. Prime Minister Netanyahu vowed on Sunday that the guilty parties responsible for the death of the Palestinian teen who was murdered will be punished. I pledge that the perpetrators of this horrific crime, which must be resolutely condemned in the most forceful language, I pledge that the perpetrators of this horrific crime will face the full weight of the law. Four days after the alleged revenge killing of Palestinian teen Muhammad Abu Qadir convulsed the nation into violence, at least one of the six unidentified young Jewish extremists arrested early Sunday morning for the brutal murder confessed to the crime. According to numerous sources, the confession was made during intensive questioning by the Israel Security Agency. The suspects, described as young men and minors, are reportedly from the cities of Beit Shemesh and Adam, a West Bank settlement. Hours after their apprehension, a Petah Tikva court ruled that five of the suspects be held for an additional eight days, while the sixth suspect was ordered to be held for five days. Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman announced Monday afternoon that his Israel Beitenu faction was splitting from Likud. Lieberman called a press conference to announce the dissolution of the union, saying that his differences of opinion with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu have made a continued partnership impossible. He emphasized that the split does not stem from political considerations, but rather from differing opinions in the field of security and defense, particularly Netanyahu's handling of continued rocket fire from the Gaza Strip. Lieberman added, however, that he has no intention of leaving the governing coalition and does not seek to advance early elections. Mobile OCT, a Tel Aviv-based startup, is working on an app that will be able to detect cervical cancer in its early stages. J-Post business reporter Neve Ellis has the story. There's an app for that. When Apple founder Steve Jobs deployed that catchphrase to convey the vast possibilities of mobile apps, he probably didn't believe there would one day be an app for screening cervical cancer. One exciting Tel Aviv startup, Mobile OCT, is working on that very issue, putting the growing power of mobile devices to use to solve international health problems. It turns out that cervical cancer, which is a, a cancer um, for women, uh, kills more women than any other cancer in low resource settings. It's the number one cause of cancer death for those women, and because of that you have over a quarter million women dying every year of a disease that if you catch it in the first five years you can treat it. And so what we're seeking to do by putting the hands of this and women around the world uh, be able to save over a quarter million lives a year just by enabling them to, to catch that cancer early enough to treat. Uh, and with today's technology, it's very easy. Apps, we can basically upgrade apps once a week and they get an immediate up, up, uh, upgrade in the phone. Uh, with, when it comes to software, we can basically 3D print pieces and send them into the field and they can try new, new pieces. Instead of screening the 200 million women we need to screen every year to, to, to avoid those unnecessary deaths, we're only screening 2 million. And, and that's a significant problem. So by, by doing this, you can multiply uh, by a significant amount the number of women that you're screening and thereby the number of women whose lives you can save.
And that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more headlines. Until then, shalom and goodbye from the Jerusalem Post studio.